Mullerian agenesis. The name itself tells you the definition that is underdevelopment or non-development of Mullerian duct. This condition is also called as mayer rokitansky Kusterhauser syndrome and sometimes sometimes even called as vaginal agenesis. Imagine these two as Mullerian ducts. This is the cranial end of the Mullerian duct and this is the caudal end of the Mullerian duct. The cranial ends of the Mullerian ducts will not fuse and they will develop into fallopian tubes. The caudal ends of the Mullerian ducts will start to fuse and they will develop into uterus and cervix and upper third of the vagina. So the cranial ends will not fuse and they will form fallopian tube. The caudal ends will develop into uterus cervix and upper two third of the vagina. But what happens in Mullerian agenesis is both the Mullerian ducts will fail to fuse. So there will be no formation of vagina, cervix and uterus. So that is what happens in Mullerian agenesis. The incidence of this condition is 1 in 5 to 10,000 females that is 1 female out of 5 to 10,000 females might be having this abnormality and the etiology of this condition is not clearly known. A mutation in gene called WNT4 which was located on chromosome 1 was implicated in some atypical Mullerian agencies cases. So WNT4 gene might be associated with Mullerian agenesis. And the presentation. Most of the patients will present to you with the complaint of primary amenorrhea. Mullerian agenesis is the second most common cause of primary amenorrhea. The first most common cause of primary amenorrhea is Turner syndrome. So most of the time patient will come to you with the complaint of amenorrhea and in some cases it is incidental finding like uh, when you are operating for some hernia or some acute abdominal cases then you incidentally find that there will be no uterus or there is no uterus and vagina upper part of the vagina so you will come to the diagnosis of uh, Mullerian agenesis so this is incidental finding of Mullerian agenesis. In some cases, the patients might even present to you with difficulty in sexual intercourse. As I told you, the upper two third of the vagina is not present in these patients, so only lower one third of the vagina is present, that is called as blind vagina. So, there might be difficulty in sexual intercourse. So, with that complaint, sometimes patients might come to you. In some cases, they might even present with the complaint of infertility. So, these are the various complaints or various presentations of uh, Mullerian agenesis. The genotype that is the genetical sex which is 46XX, it is female and the phenotype which is the external appearance or the physical appearance is same as female. The secondary sexual characters like development of axillary and pubic hair is normal. Even the development of breast is normal in these persons. The only problem it is with uterus, cervix and the vagina. They are absent in these persons but uh, the remaining structures like uh, ovaries, fallopian tubes, axillary hair, pubic hair, breast, this all will be normal in these persons. And the classification of Mullerian agenesis, it is of a three types, typical, atypical and MURCS syndrome. In typical variety, we can see only uterovaginal abnormalities. In atypical variety, along with uterovaginal abnormalities, renal abnormalities might be found. In MURCS syndrome, along with this, about two, we can see skeletal and cardiac abnormalities. So out of these three, the typical variety is the most common one with the prevalence, prevalence rate of 64%. Uh, While come to the external genitalia, 
the labia majora and labia minora are normal and the clitoris is also normal and the internal genitalia as i told you before uterus is absent cervix is absent upper two third of the vagina is absent but only lower third of the vagina is present that is called as blind vagina and the fallopian tubes are normal and by and the gonads or ovaries ovaries present ovaries are present in these patients so these ovaries will secrete estrogen and progesterone normally this estrogen and progesterone will help in the development of breast and axillary and pubic hair so that is why persons with mullerian agenesis or having normal breast that is normal physical appearance and normal axillary and pubic hair when comes to the treatment what we can do is a vaginoplasty in which we can create uh, an artificial vagina with the help of uh, perineal muscles and we have to counsel her husband that she might not conceive in the pa- in the future and if they want babies what they can do is they can go for in vitro in vitro fertilization or a surrogacy but in recent times there are several uterine transplantations were taken place and uh, they are even successful but uh, this is very limited to only few parts of the world only few pa- only in few places they are doing transplantations but uh, and even the success rate is uh, very few for this so that is the treatment plan treatment plan for mullerian agenesis so that is it thank you very much